we're going to tie a hackled skip nymph. We begin with a 2302 and a size 14. Thread I'm using is brown A dot. I lay down a bed of thread on my hook. I'm untwisting the thread so it flattens out and gives me more coverage. I'll work that thread back into the bend of the hook. I'm going to take a piece of copper wire and small and tie it in at the back end. Oh, excuse me, first I'm going to add some lead wire. Uh, this lead wire is the same diameter as my hook. And I'm not going to, I'm leaving room at the back end of it and the front end of it. I'm just giving weight to, uh, it extends partially, in, partially into the abdomen section. Now I'm going to grab a piece of small copper wire. I'm using that as my ribbing. Now I like it to come into the uh, onto the lead area, and what it does is then when I wrap thread through the lead, it doesn't go all the way to the through the gaps between the lead or it squeezes itself. The the copper wire stops it from doing that and I think it holds the lead better onto the hook. And I got a little bit of a dam of thread going at the front part of this and also put a little bit of a dam at the back end of it so my lead doesn't wander on me. All right, I'm going to take my thread and split it. I'm going to put some um, hair's mask in there. I just love, I still like this material. Better than any synthetic I can use. Now I've taken some twist, I'm taking some twist out of my thread and then I'll lift it with my bodkin as well as my finger and it'll flatten out and then I'll take my bodkin and split that thread. That's the only way I can split such thin thread. That's only, it's only a dot. And I'll take my dubbing and sandwich it in there in that dubbing loop. I just want to take advantage as much as I can of the of the spikiness with the guard hairs on the on the hairs mask. I'm going to twist my thread, spin my bobbin to trap those hairs inside that loop. I'm going to wrap that dubbing brush up to about the thorax area with touching turns. See how buggy it looks? I think you could just fish just that by itself and it'd be fine. I get a little bit of room. I won't, there's not enough to really do the split te thread techniques, but I'll just take some dubbing and twist it onto my thread and, and dub the rest of that thorax. Now this is one of the few cases where I do drop quite a bit of dubbing on there. Usually it's very sparse, but I like that bushiness and that's what I'm going for.
Now I'm going to take some pheasant tail fibers. My pheasant table, pheasant tail is going to be a back strap along the abdomen on the top of the fly, as well as my tail. And I'll tie it in right at the thorax area and pull it back and then rewrap that wire forward to the eyes and it'll trap that pheasant tail on top of the hook. Really good part about this fly is that it very, uses very little materials, very easy to tie, not a lot of technique in it, but very effective. I'm taking my wire and I'm creating the ribbing and I'm also trapping my pheasant tail on top. I'll work my wire up into the thorax area, then I'm going to tie it off. Now I'm not going to cut it off because I'm going to use that wire to tie down my hackle, tie down my hackle. Now I'm, I've bent back those pheasant tail fibers and I'm trapping them down and, and then wrapping thread as well as that wire. And I'm, what I'm going to do then is take some more of that hair's mask and dub that area. That, so I've got a thicker thorax is what I'm after. I work that dubbing up bait up to behind the hook, excuse me, the eye. Now I'm going to take the feather from a hen neck and strip off one side. And I'm wrapping backwards, meaning back towards the bend of the hook, back towards the point of the hook. So I'll tie it in right behind the eye and then polymer it through the dubbing and through the thorax towards the back of the fly. And then I'll tie it off, tie it down and off with the wire that's now sitting at the therm, uh, thorax point. See how I'm just taking those open, open winds? Now I'm palmering that hen feather back towards the, the, where I have the uh, thorax tied in. Now I'm taking my wire and I'm wrapping it through the thorax area and using it to trap down the hen neck. I'm just helicoptering off the rest of that copper wire. And I'm going to trim a lot of the excess material that I have sitting around the eye of the hook. Now I'm going to take that pheasant tail and pull it back over, and it'll be my wing case. Put those hackle fibers so they're same on each side and then just pull that pheasant tail tie it in right behind the eye and that becomes the wing case and that's the hackled skip nymph
I'm gonna finish it off just to whip this finish. I was told by a friend who actually is the production manager for one of the fly companies. And he says, you don't need to use head cement. You just make sure you do a half dozen whip finishes. Ah, now I'm just being picky and touching up things. Thank you.